So we are here today. We are going to be discussing how to jump in in Street Fighter V. Now, before I get into the bullet points, I want to address something that I wrote down. This is the very first rule of jumping. Don't rely on jumps. They're very dangerous. You want your ground game to be extremely on point, And the jump comes for certain things that you're looking out for in your opponent. And uh, jumps are used to kind of open up the match a little bit. Because if you don't jump, then it's very uh, dry, solid, just ground game. But you kind of open up the match a little bit when you start jumping. So again, do not rely on jump-ins. Everything that I'm going to be teaching you, don't rely on jump-ins. Jump-ins are good sometimes. With certain characters, they're better than other characters. However, you don't want to rely on jump-ins. It's not a core part of your gameplay. It is just just there on the side. But it's not a core, core part of how you develop as a player, in my opinion. Um, like I said, certain characters have better jump-ins, so it, it could be part of your gameplay, like uh, like Kami, uh, Mika. But I think you shouldn't ever focus on jumping more than you are focused on the ground. <clears throat> okay, so with that being said, the first thing that I want to talk about is the cross-up jump. I like, I like the cross-up jump a lot because uh, I use a rushdown character. So whenever I do jump, it's going to be usually in this area to get that to get that ambiguous jump. Just right in that area to get that ambiguous jump in. Because you can choose the button and it might not cross up. So with Ken, Ken has a very strong jumping fierce. So I could jump from like right here and still land on the same side. But if I press medium kick, I could get the cross up. Now, for cross up jumps, I have four bullet points that I've written down. The first one is you're gonna be jumping around the footsie range when it's uh, tense, when the footsies is being very tense at the moment. And by tense, I mean you're getting whiffed buttons. Both of you guys are whiffing buttons just to catch somebody slipping. You're both doing this motion where you're dancing back and forth. You know, when the, when the neutral is very tense. When this, when this neutral in this area is very tense, the pressure is real. Buttons are being pressed. A little, a couple of trade-offs. Maybe you got a, maybe you got something, and then he gets something, and then you get another attack, and then he gets another attack. But you're both just playing this game in this in this range. Now, the reason why a cross-up jump works when there's tenseness in the neutral, or I should say, when you're in this range, is because they are extremely, extremely focused on the ground. They're, the reason why they are extremely focused on the ground is because of something like this. Again, something like this. Or something like this, which leads into a crush counter. Again, tense neutral, something like this, which leads to a crush counter. If they tech. Um, it could lead to... Um, you you applying more pressure if, if they're not on point could lead to, to you getting in very easily and applying more pressure and against characters that don't have a reversal or, or a DP I should say um, this, is, this is very scary because once they start dealing with the pressure they can't interrupt with a DP afterwards so they have to hold it so it kind of works better against characters that obviously don't have some sort of uh, DP or reversal. So again, the reason why you want your cross-up jumps, right? The reason why they work or why you should be doing them is because if your neutral game is on point and you guys have that tense moment, your opponent is going to be thinking about this, 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 this and 
I guess the last thing would be this. All right, but that's the last thing on his mind, I think. I think if you make your opponent focus so much on the ground and that you display that you're, you, you don't need to jump, you haven't really given him any reason to look up at the air yet because you've been dominating the ground or you've been playing solid enough to, to make him fear the ground, then the jump is not going to really be on his mind. This is where you strike. So you establish a solid neutral game. You, you establish the pressure right here. And it's very tense at the moment. It's very tense. Both of you guys are pressing buttons. Both of you guys are whiffing things. Both of you guys are trying to react to one another. But you're in this range against Bison, as an example. You're in this range. Now, you establish that and then bam. Random jump medium kick. Now, he doesn't have a crosscut DP. He doesn't really have anything to deal with that quick jump short or quick jump medium kick. What he has to do to deal with that jump medium kick is to down fierce, I believe. I believe it is to down fierce. Or to jump strong with Bison. To, to air to air you. Meaning he jumps in the air as you jump and he hits you out of it because he expected it. Or does he react it very quickly? However, if he does air to air you, that tells you that he was definitely a lot more focused on the air than he was on the ground. So maybe next time you could get up with a dash throw. So, um, what leads to the cross up jump working? So I just listed off four things that are right in front of your opponent. So the dash grab, that's one. The dash uh, crush counter, that's two. Let's throw it again, the dash crush counter. Uh, the walk up button. Walk up throw. Um, and then the last thing is the jump itself. Because, because how many times have you feared a move is coming and then it comes? And you still don't do anything about it, even though you anticipate it. So it's still on his mind. So those are the six things in this range that could that your opponent is focused on, which is why it leads to the cross of jump working. Um, There's that very tense. And remember, it has to be that very tense, neutral situation as well. Where, where both of you are just focused. Another bullet point is fireballs. Fireballs lead to cross-up jumps working, especially if they're in this range. Because, for example, Bison in this range, he's going to be wanting. He wants to do this. All right. So Bison wants to do this. Okay. So we established that Bison wants to do that button. I'm just neutral jumping for the proper timing. But let's say you throw fireballs in that range and he gets counter hit a couple of times well, right so now he's like oh crap I gotta focus on how to press the down forward fierce a little better or I just gotta block right now because he's throwing fireballs and by the time you already thought that you jumped so show that one more time okay so he's pressing that down forward fierce if you're throwing fireballs from right here very quickly he's like he you become unpredictable what exactly are you going to do are you going to throw another fireball are you going to dash up throw are you going to dash up roundhouse i don't know but if you're throwing those those proper fireballs you you quickly are dancing in and out of this range right so you're dancing in and out of this range when you're throwing those fireballs all it takes is for you to dance in and out of this range and then jump medium kick again you're dancing in and out of the range right you're throwing those fireballs throwing those fireballs you don't know when I'm going to jump. You're like you, you viewing me right now. You do, the person that is watching, you can clearly see that I'm just doing back and forth, but you don't know when I'm going to jump. Do you, I could throw five of these. I could throw six of these. I could throw seven of these. You didn't know when I was going to jump. So it's very unpredictable. And because you have other options as well, you don't have to jump again. Do not rely on the jump, but you don't have to jump. You could, do that. Could throw these fireballs. Bam. Could throw these fireballs. Walk up. Button fireball. Right. So there's no real need for you to take that risk. However, like I said, you want to open the matchup a little bit. You want to give him an extra thing to think about. So you establish that jump cross up game. 
And reuse jump short is actually very strong, so it works pretty well in, in cross-up situations. So, like I just said, the fireballs are also a very good tool into opening up your cross-up jump game because, excuse me, because it gives your opponent an extra thing to think about. So watch this now. When you start throwing fireballs right here, and you're throwing these fireballs, if you haven't seen already, I did a lesson on throwing fireballs offensively and defensively. But let's say you throw just one fireball. Your opponent could start thinking about, oh man, he's playing a fireball game. So he's, he might think that, oh, he might start thinking about the options that he has to beat out a fireball game. Whereas your mindset at the moment is I'm doing these fireballs to jump, not even to use it for a fireball offensive approach or defensive approach, but your opponent is seeing fireballs and is seeing you dance. So he might start thinking of the ways to get around the fireball because he's either getting hit by the fireball or he's blocking the fireball. So you could literally divert your opponent's mind to a whole different route because of how good of an illusionist you are. Ooh, right. So you're focused on one thing, but you're doing it in a way to divert his attention from your true motive. Your true motive for throwing that fireball is to set up the perfect jump. Whereas he might be thinking because you're throwing a few fireballs and playing that ground game that you've established that I have a very solid ground game that you want to either approach me offensively with your fireball or you want to keep me away and then that's when you sneak in the jump cross up so they're not even expecting it that's the thing with street fighter is that as the defender and as the person on offense you are literally thinking at such a fast fast pace about all of the options that you have all of the options that your opponent has how to divert your opponent's mind, how to break your opponent's mind, how to download your opponent's mind on top of you doing what you have to do, thinking about where you are, thinking about what exactly you're doing next. So the layers just are endless. The layers are just endless. But there is a common theme here, and that is you have to be on point. You have to be very, very quick with your mind. If you're not quick, if you're not confident, then you slip up and you can easily get diverted. That's how people get inside of their opponent's minds. That's how downloads happen by diverting their opponent's attention to a, to a certain thing and then them falling for the bait. So you're just baiting your opponent with the, with the movement that you do, with the buttons that you press, with everything that you're doing. Okay. Um, right. And the third bullet point that I wanted to discuss was when you are pressuring with walk up buttons. So let's say, remember the first thing that I mentioned was dancing in the range, right? Because you, you have the opportunity to dash grab, you have the opportunity to dash crush counter. You have the opportunity to walk up button. You could walk up throw or you could jump cross up. Now I want to focus a little bit about the walk up button because if you recall i said earlier that the cross up jump will work very well when the neutral is tense and by tense i mean back and forth both of you guys are whiffing buttons both of you guys are trading off buttons here and there both of you guys are getting hit randomly so it's very tense both of you are very focused on the ground especially in this range because this is where you want to do the cross-up jump. So with that being said, the tenseness, how does the tenseness, how do you create a tense neutral? How do you create the thought inside of your opponent's mind? I need to focus on the ground because he is advancing on the ground and pressuring me on the ground very well. How do you create that thought inside of his head? By walking up and pressing buttons by being careful, walk up, press buttons. Oh man, he's nervous right now. Imagine what a couple of these are gonna do. Wait a second, bam. 
Wait, wait, is he, he didn't do anything? Oh. Yeah. Yep. Oh, my bad. I didn't mean the DP. But imagine what a couple of those would do to him. You know, you're just staying right outside that range. Playing perfectly. And, and of course, he's going to be pressing buttons too. So I'm not just saying you're going to get away with this. Don't, you know, keep in mind that he has buttons as well. So you have to dodge the buttons properly. Get the download on when he's pressing those buttons. And then when you have your opening, you could start applying a little bit of pressure. You know, those walk-up buttons... See what that was right there? So while you're thinking that I'm going to do crotch strong fireball. Oops. Yeah, I'm, I'm on pad right now. My apologies. Walk up button. Walk up button. Fireball. Dancing in this range. Walk up no button. I mean, no fireball. And then jump medium kick. Again. So you could mix up your walk up. Walk up button with fireball. Walk up button. Nothing. Oh, oh what's going on? What are you doing, bison? Bam. What's going on? What's going on? What's up, Bison? Oh, bam. What's going on, Bison? Oh, I'm not going to throw the fireball this time. See? You have to create the thought in his head that he's advancing on the ground and trying to whiff, a, whiff punish a button or something on the ground. And then you just got to replicate a certain sequence that he just saw. And then follow up with a jump again the walk up pressure the walk up pressure creates the tenseness the walk up pressure creates that discomfort for him on the ground already and he thinks that you're beating him on the ground all you got to do is then chop jump medium uh jump medium kick or jump short get that cross up range you're in that cross up range once you start pressing these buttons once you get in your button range bam I'm just showing off for you just because he's a very basic character and you could apply it differently with your character <clears throat> depending on their their jump arc and the button choices that you have um, so yeah that's gonna do it for part one which is what leads to the cross-up jump working and why what what ranges you should stay at the things that you force your opponent to think about the things that you should be thinking about and and the art that you create to open up your opponent with the jump comes let's go over it one more time before i answer some questions it comes with the dancing in this range the tenseness in this range the tenseness because you're dancing in and out deals with the random dash deals with the random dash grab you can do dash crush counter you could do walk up button you could do walk up button you could just do fireballs fireballs dancing in and out of the range that's what leads to the cross-up jump working they're so focused on the ground the immediate ground they're right in front of you you're right in front of them anything can happen in street fighter 5 here anything anything that could lead to the round being lost so there's so much pressure there's so much pressure in your opponent's mind when you force them to think about these things and then you get away with the jump so that's going to do it for part one um